Glad to welcome James Monkey Schaefer, the guitarist, back from Corn today. And uh, Monkey, I want to start it off today with actually an email that uh, I got sent to me from one of your fans and listeners here. And they wanted to talk about the um, Music as a Weapon tour that you guys have been involved in uh, earlier in the year. And wanted to know if this tour was kind of a call to arms for musicians to be more involved in uh, the changing times that we've been going through in the world recently. I, I think every little bit helps, yeah. you know? Yeah. I, I don't think anyone's going to you know, go out and change the world with a song or anything, but I think, you know, if, if a band can bring some sort of awareness, uh, a consciousness right. to an issue, mm -hmm. whether it be political or social, yeah. I think it's important. Um, but, you know, I think, you know... Uh, I think Rage Against the Machine did a pretty good job, they little sure by did. little, Absolutely. Uh, raising the awareness to political issues and social issues. Um, I think a little bit it helps. And yeah. Tom Morello still still yeah, be man, uh, carrying is, on that uh, that torch a little bit. Yeah, he's he's one of my heroes, man. Thank you for answering that kind of a deep question, but that's okay. We appreciate when the listeners send us questions to ask the band. You know, Monkey, I read an interview recently where you said that this new album was therapeutic for you. I just think that. It's sort of just making record with Ross Robinson can be, you know, um, therapeutic in a way that, you know, I don't know, he pulls out sort of the, the best and can pull out the worst. Yeah. And especially, you know, the best and worst out of singers. Like, whoa, you know, um, the things that you didn't really know, you know, like, what's bothering you? What's wrong with you today? Yeah. You know, and he'd really get down there and, and really go, you know, layers and layers. Yeah. Of, what's really bothering you um, and it can go all the way back to childhood. Alright Monkey, hold that thought I want to talk a little bit more about that in depth here, talking a little bit about how writing a new album can kind of be therapeutic for an artist and even on your last album, Corn 3 Remember Who You Are, it seems like you guys kind of went back to your earlier time when you were still hungry and you were really striving to get to the next level so I can see how that would be therapeutic for sure. You know, it, it is like that I mean, even just that fresh Frustration right there yeah. is something to write about. Yeah. Like, dude, I'm, that's, I'm frustrated because of, that's as far as I can go. Right. Okay, well, then let's write about that. Yeah. yeah. Why are you mad at me? Yeah. <laughs> so, so, you know, you elaborate on whatever's in, in the moment, and, and that's, that, you know, that's sort of the beauty of this album is that we elaborated on every, every second that we were recording. We were able to develop each idea. I think to its fullest. And you know, we talked a little bit about Corn 3, Remember Who You Are. And one great thing about that album was you had no label deal yet. No time constraints were put on the band either. Um, I think, you know, it, it, it did enhance the, the whole experience. You know, there wasn't anybody sitting over our shoulders sort of telling us, you know, oh, we need that one song to hit the radio. Yeah. And, and it really it helps with the create the whole creative process and it becomes more enjoyable and i think you know that's what it's about right we make records because we love to yeah it's fun um and you know at the same time we didn't really know you know oh who's gonna want this yeah and there's always that kind of like right you know, right and then you gotta remind yourself oh yeah we're, we're corn you know we, we spend 15 16 years making a name for ourselves so there was always that you know what are we going to do with it when it's done yeah in the back of your head but mainly it was about making a great record and that's that's sort of not having someone looking over our shoulders what helps create you know that creative process well i hear you now monkey i want to ask you kind of a personal question here if you and the rest of the guys from corn did not have music as an outlet to express your emotions how do you think you would uh, get them out there? Um, I think probably some, you know, painting. Yeah. I think uh, yeah. art in some form. Um, you know, probably be miserable, wouldn't you? I'd definitely be miserable <laughs> or dead. <laughs> or in jail. On, on, my, on my way to dead, being miserable. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> or jail, which is just as bad. I like it. You know, even with the lineup changes the band has kind of been through, when you really break it all down, the core of Corn is still Jonathan's voice, Fieldy's bass, and, of course, your guitar monkey. I, I think the core has remained the same in... I, I just it's the, the approach you know yeah. it's like you know it's it's a it's a, a formula that that still works for us creatively right, right. And, and it's just it's it's not some scientific method or a formula yeah. it's just us getting in a room and, and sort of sparking ideas off of each other right. until you, you, you see that really big flame that yeah. like oh wow and then you know you you kind of feel everybody's energy in the room rise and yeah. 
you start to get excited for other people to hear it, and then you know you have something that's you know that you think is great, and it still has you know we still layer upon it and it, and build upon those ideas. Um, but you know, essentially, it's us getting in the room, building riffs, and letting Jonathan write his lyrics and sing melodies over it, and that's how it's been. I wanted to go back and talk about your last album, Corn Three. Remember who you are. Now, my first listen, I instantly recognized that earlier corn sound. I mean, was that something you guys were shooting for from the very beginning? You know what? There was sort of like a, an idea. Everyone sort of have, has an idea when they come into the studio, and it, and once we really start. Once we got started, we sort of, you know, all, all those ideas sort of went out out the door. Right. And we just said, let's just start capturing little bits and pieces and, and building on them. Um, but it was very comfortable in the room. I mean, for me, maybe not for Ray. <laughs> for, for him, as far as having Ross, you, a producer, yeah. is, Ross is known for being very hard on drummers. Right. And being, you know, the newest member of the band, and Ray had sort of a, a, a tall task and, and that Ross really it gave him uh, hell. Really, yeah, you know? yeah. Um, but you know what? Uh, Ray is a great professional drummer person, and he pers- persevered and proved himself not only to him, I think to Ross and the band, but you know to himself because he he was doing things that he really wasn't you know used to doing. You know, which is sort of you know playing without click track and yeah. and trying just crazy crazy uh, techniques that really pushed his boundary i think as a as a player and really really helped the songs for the record come alive now monkey i wanted to ask you about new technology available to you today that uh, you wish you had when you guys first started out i mean just as like you know uh, as a guitar player like youtube is so killer for guitar players yeah because you can look up anything <laughs> and find how to play it <laughs> 120 ways right uh, and, and I just I, I wish I had that when I was learning because <laughs> now I'm still like looking now I'm starting to find myself looking up yeah. different sites and, and, and I wish I had that when I was learning how wow. to play it but that's and good. I'm using it now. I wanted to ask you, coming from a technology standpoint, can you tell us why you still prefer to use tape to record on instead of the digital means as so many other musicians use? I think, you know, the, it, 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 it does something to the, spon- the spontaneous creative process that you really don't can't get. Yeah. Because a digital tape, you can edit it so easily. Right. You can sort of go back over it and... And, and make your corrections and make everything pristine and perfect. Yeah. And, and I think the beauty of tape is that it's more it's an organic feeling. Mm-hmm. You you sort of you, it captures you in the moment. Right. And, and the the imperfections of the recording are captured as people. Everybody has imperfections, and it, it starts to feel more organic and less robotic. I guess. Yeah, it's very interesting. We were talking a little bit about your preference while you're recording the new album to work more with tape than the digital means. And it seems like I remember we had a drummer on the show one time said, you know, if you listen closely to some of these classic albums, you can actually hear like the squeak of a drum pedal and, you know, imperfections like that. It adds that sort of characteristics right. that each, each person, you know, has yeah. as a... Uh, as as people as the imperfections as we are right. that's the beauty of each person is that we're all different um and that's the beauty about using tape is that it's those little imperfections that make make it great i think i'm just going to start listening really really close just to see if i can find the imperfections on maybe some of those great albums like led zeppelin 4 or acdc's back in black stuff like that you know yeah and even like you know well you know you think about led zeppelin how many times have those drums been used you know and there's a lot of imperfections right that if those drums were recorded these days they would have fixed absolutely you know, because they were just like okay throw the mics up let's go let's right, do it. right it's about capturing energy and capturing a vibe i think totally that's that's what you know the beauty of tape is monkey i heard something about a little side project that you were working on so what can you tell us about that yeah a, a record that i worked on about two years ago with um brooks wackerman who's a bad religion drummer yeah and uh billy gould who plays drums with i mean sorry bass with faith no more mm-hmm. uh, for years uh, myself a, a guy named steve krolikowski who's from a band called repeater um, another producer named Leo, Leopold Ross, and also another producer named um, Jim Monty, who worked on our our recent albums as an engineer okay. and also producing. Um, Zach Baird, who plays keyboards with us, touring keyboards with us, is with you. Obviously. Yeah, he he. We all collaborated on this sort of you know um, 
we I, it was just really a, something for me to kind of fill up time and, yeah. and it and the, the people that were involved really put 110 percent into each whatever they did and now it's it's almost done we're mixing it and um i tried to keep a tight lid on it because yeah. i wanted to be you know i wanted to have a, a some sort of significance when it's released and uh it's you know some recordings i did that I, i'm really proud of and the, the people that were involved are are great talented people and I can't wait for people to hear it. Oh, me too. I'd love to hear it. And as soon as you can get us something, we'll play it right here on the Rock 30, Monkey. You know, you guys are working on the new album, and I read some new material. Will you describe as a little bit of the Soundgarden style, that uh, sort of Seattle sound? So that's kind of cool from Korn. So maybe talk about that. Uh, yeah, well, I think, you know, I so maybe misquoted. Uh, yeah. And it, it, it was, you know... It's kind of hard for corn to sound like anything else but corn. <laughs> right. But I think, you know, more or less is what I meant was it, it had, uh, there was a certain moment when I was listening to it that it, it, it had a feeling of like that sort of grunge, not even the sound, but yeah. a feeling. Not even right. necessarily, it didn't really sound like it. somebody asked me and, and that just kind of came out. Well, here we are, the 20th anniversary of the song Smells Like Teen Spirit and Nirvana's legendary album Nevermind. You know, your music just kind of goes through cycles. So uh, maybe it's time for a little bit of that grunge comeback, if you will. Even, you know, I was listening to a radio station the other day and uh, they were playing uh, Crazy Train. I was yeah. like, oh my God, this song is 30 years old and <laughs> they're playing it on the modern rock station. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. this is great. You know, wow. It's really a timeless song, uh, timeless record, that yeah. whole Diary of a Madman. Sure. And, um, you know, I, it's just really, it is, like you said, it's a 20-year cycle, and it's, it's again, art, inspiring art to sort of help whatever, you know, the, the movement, the res right. revolution right, of music right, that right. we all try to set out to do because this is the vision you have in your mind, in your heart when you go... To create a band, yeah. To, to you know, you're you're out to make a revolution. You're, you're out to, to to burn the city down. You right. know, sure. And that's that's still alive. I think in almost everybody that plays music.